If you are unfamiliar with who Dr. Tom Cowan is by now, you must have been sleeping under a rock over the last four years, or you're probably new to this podcast. And for that, I welcome you. If you're unfamiliar with him, Dr. Tom Cowan is a well-known alternative medicine doctor, author, and speaker with a common sense holistic approach to health and wellness. He has given countless lectures and workshops throughout the U.S. on a variety of subjects in health and medicine and is the author of six books. Recent publications include The Contagion Myth, co-authored by Sally Found Morell, Cancer and the New Biology of Water, and Human Heart, Cosmic Heart. Until his recent retirement from active practice, Dr. Cowan had a general medical practice, first in upstate New York, then for 17 years in New Hampshire, and for 17 years in California. He was a founding board member of the Weston A. Price Foundation and currently serves as its vice president. Dr. Cowan continues to actively lecture and interview, sharing information via his website, drtomcowan.com, where he also offers many of the products he has used personally and in his practice. Additionally, Dr. Cowan offers high quality beyond organic vegetable powders and kitchen staples on his drcowansgarden.com. You can find both of those links in the show notes. Dr. Cowan lives with his wife, Linda, on rural farmland in upstate New York. He has three children, one stepson, and seven thriving grandchildren. He is also the founder of one of our sponsors, and we are so grateful for this, the New Biology Clinic. In this episode, we discuss all things related to new biology, the old biology, or what Tom calls the new old biology, and then he calls the new biology the old, old biology, and you'll hear all that in the episode. Basically, what Tom is teaching about the new way to approach health is not novel in any sense, but it is not commonly known. And that's the issue. And that's what the New Biology Clinic is trying to solve with its approach. The New Biology Clinic was born of Dr. Cowan's profound desire to be a healing force for the world and his commitment to the health and wellness of the community. As a member of the New Biology Clinic, you will receive practical, personalized support aligned with Dr. Cowan's New Biology approach to medicine and health and holistic services offering a total wellness approach which includes private health and wellness consults as needed, a growing suite of enrichment services that include group fitness sessions, group breathing integration exercises, group biofield tuning, group guided meditation, group qigong, which will be led by me here soon on New Biology Clinic, and wellness specialist-led live stream events, as well as a growing membership resource library and much, much more. If you're interested in becoming a member of the New Biology Clinic, be sure to check the show notes for more details. The New Biology Clinic has special offerings for listeners of this show and for members of The Way Forward. During this episode, I had to mute myself quite a bit because I was laughing. <laughs> um, <laughs> because Dr. Cowan's analogies that he uses are so hilarious and also so basic, kind of showing the the absurdity of the mainstream medical approach to to science and to health and uh, just the lack of logic behind a lot of the commonly accepted but totally incorrect assumptions um, with respect to, to health and the way disease manifests. So this episode was awesome. It's always a pleasure to talk with Dr. Cowan. I know you'll enjoy it. And again, be sure to check out the New Biology Clinic and check the show notes for more information related to that. Enjoy. Tom, you are one of my favorite human beings on, I don't want to call it this planet, on this this realm that we call Earth, and I am super excited for this conversation. Uh, let's just let's just start by Thanks, jumping Alec, in. Thanks, Alec, and the feeling is mutual, so. Oh, thank you. I there we go. That, Tom. Thanks. Thanks. So let's, let's start with this. What is the old biology, and why is it wrong? Yeah, it's a good question. <clears throat> Well, is it the reason it's an, it's also an interesting question because you could also distinguish the old old biology which was right and and then there was a new old biology which is wrong and now we're we're trying for a new biology which is a lot like the old old biology which was right and I I would say 
there's somewhere around 150 years ago, but it really goes be, be, back before that. Science, including biology, made a change in philosophy. And, uh, and everything we do in science and medicine, biology, in a way came, came from that. So let me, uh, I just thought, we just happened to be writing this. Here's two descriptions of <clears throat> what I mean by that. One is by supposedly the most brilliant scientist ever, at least of the last hundred years, times man of the century, 20th century, Albert Einstein. Okay, here's what he said from the book, The Structure of Scientific Thought. The axiomatic basis of theoretical physics cannot be an inference from experience, but must be free invention. Now, what does that mean? It's a lot of big words. Inference from experience means you see something and try to understand what you see, or you do an experiment and you try to understand what happened in that experiment. Free invention could also be called making shit up. Right? Right. And he said that from now on, the way we do science is we're not going to like see what's real in the world and then try to understand, make inferences and, and understand what happened. We're going to make shit up and then we're going to like try to uh, rationalize why we made that up. And he doesn't say this in this quote, but then once that, that every time you do that, it gets disproven. hundred mm -hmm. percent. And then when that happens, you make up a, a reason why you don't, you don't reevaluate the original thing you made up. You just, at, you just so-called reify it and make another reason why that must be. So an example would be, one of my favorite ones is, you know, uh, just a silly one. So I know why the buildings in the Ukraine are blowing up. It's exploding unicorns. I just made that up. I didn't see. And, and somebody could say, well, Tom, did you see the unicorns? Because I went and looked and I didn't see any unicorns anywhere. So right, he disproved my my claim. So then I got caught, and I could say, "Oh, you're right. There's no unicorns." Or I could say, "Dumb shit, Alec. They're invisible unicorns. That's why you can't see them. Like, don't you know that they're invisible?" Oh, and then it takes a while before somebody disproves that. Next thing you know, you forgot that in the beginning you made up the unicorns. Mm -hmm. So if you go through a list of the things they made up in the, in the old, the new old biology, <laughs> right? They made up, first of all, that their cells it used to be just tissue and protoplasm. Then they made up germs like uh, viruses that they couldn't see that's the unicorn story. They gave properties to bacteria that they didn't have, meaning they caused disease, even though they disproved it. So they would take just bacteria and expose it to people and they didn't get sick. So they, <laughs> they disproved, but it doesn't matter because you got to keep the story going, right? It's all about uh, free invention. They then said there's this DNA and that's the hereditary material and it's divided into genes and the genes code for the proteins. And then they find out there's 200,000 proteins and 10,000 genes, so-called. And so if you know arithmetic, it can't work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so the whole thing, and then you have to figure out how to get the mRNA out of the nucleus because there's no hole for that. And then uh, anyways, then you make up ribosomes. And that's where the RNA is translated into uh, protein. So they get the mRNA uh, shots and it goes to the ribosomes and makes spike proteins. 
except every ribosome is a perfect circle on a picture. And they had to, that means they were spheres in real life. And if you realize that they homogenized the tissue in a blender and cut it at random angles, there's no way you could get an orange to be always perfect spheres. <laughs> so, so they disprove there's ribosome, but it doesn't matter because they, they, and there's synapses in nerves, you know, little gaps. But how'd you find them? Because you can't see them. So it's like the unicorn story. Well, I dehydrated the tissue like a nerve and then it broke. So that's a synapse. Yeah, but that's just because you did something to the nerve and made it break. That's why you see a gap. And then you think they have this model, like how the nerves work, you know, that uh, you, you get this transmission and the calcium and the magnesium go in and out. And then the neurotransmitters swim across the gaps. And then you watch somebody play the piano and it's instantaneous. And you think, how did the neurotransmitter swim, swim that fast between all your fingers and all the calcium go in and out? And you think, that's not right. And at the end of the day, then you have a medicine that's based on people making shit up. And I don't know about you, Alec, but I don't think that works. No, <laughs> <laughs> clearly it doesn't work. Because it's it's wrong. I mean, what can you say? It's wrong. Now, this, you know, this, this, this is something that, is is frustrating to me well there's a number of things about this that are frustrating to me as i come to learn this one is what language do we use to describe the various biological processes of the body and i hate even calling them processes or let's just say the things that happen that that appear to occur right and then the second thing is and and this relates to another big topic i wanted to get into during this is we already know allopathic medicine is based in everything that you just said. But unfortunately, even amongst the, you know, health freedom crowds and the natural slash alternative approaches to health, holistic approaches to health, the overwhelming majority of those are also based in the same thing. So how do we begin to reframe what health is and how our body works without becoming nihilistic and just sort of throwing it all away and be say, saying, you know, we don't know shit. This is too complex. I give up. Yeah. Well, it's a good question too, but let me, let me read another quote. I happen to get from a, <laughs> a another physicist. The physicists are supposedly the smart guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> like they're the ones. So this guy's name is Herbert Do Dingle. Not to be confused with Herbert Dingleberry. <laughs> he wrote a book, A Century of Science. He says, quote, the real world is not only unknown and unknowable, but inconceivable. That is to say, contradictory or absurd. So in other words, basic scientific philosophy in the modern era tells us that well, the reason these things don't make sense, right? Because, you know, the, like, how can the nerve go that fast? Uh, it's obvious, Alec. The world is absurd. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy that either. <laughs> it's inconceivable. It's in, you can't even think, you can't, even trying to understand it makes no sense. Because it's fundamentally, it's absurd. Now, then it, you could ask, well, why bother to do science? Like, just throw up your hand and say, fuck, the whole thing doesn't make and, any and sense. And I can see where people would get to that, though. I can yeah, see. Yeah, totally. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Yeah, right, right. So, uh, what, so the question, so how do we talk about this? With the problem there, and, you know, is, and this includes this so-called freedom and alternative and functional uh, medicine people is we live in a scientifically illiterate culture. And the worst offenders are the scientists and the medical doctors. 
Let me give you an example. Uh, it, it's very clear that the way of science is, as you know, much as anybody, somebody makes a claim and you investigate the claim. Now, and for those, I'm sure everybody listening to you already knows this, but there's a friend of ours who had a great example. You're 18, you go to your mother, parents' closet, you find out divorce, pa I mean, adoption papers, you, you, you find out you were adopted, here's the paperwork, you go to your parents, is it true? Yes, you know, we got you from China, which explains why you look Chinese and your parents are Caucasian, you always wondered about that. So you go to your friend and say, geez, I just learned I was 18, my, you know, I'm adopted. He says, who are your real parents? He says, I don't know. I just found out today. He says, I don't believe you then. If you can't tell me who your real parents are, I, 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 I think you weren't, you weren't adopted. And you think, what the? Now, I have spoken to prominent, you know, I know all these guys from, and women from way back, prominent, uh, you know, health freedom doctors. And I say, you know, there's no virus. There's no way chicken pox or COVID is caused by a virus. And they say, well, how did I get COVID then? Right? How did, if you can't tell me where your parents are, I don't believe you. Now, when I say it like the parents, I stole that example, by the way. Um, it's absurd. Like nobody <laughs> you can't think like that. You can apply it to a murder, murder case too. Like there, there are endless examples of this. Yeah. You if you don't tell me who who killed that person, you're you're, you're going to jail. Right. Well, no, it doesn't work like right. it's not my but they insist that that's the way it is. It has to be. Mm. Now, I would contend that that person can't learn anything because mm -hmm. all they're they're stuck in a anti-rational anti-scientific paradigm and it will keep them from okay it's not that you may not know where who your parents are you may not know why somebody got chicken pox and you have to learn to live in the wonder of it but once you do then it's truly amazing what you start to learn mm. it just the world just says this guy is serious i'm going to help him out mm. and this person says something so you know how do we talk about this um I, here i have another quote for you i don't know why i have i i've been looking into quotes lately these are great Please. so here's the philosophy of the new biology clinic in a nutshell I'll see if you can guess who said this? There are no specific diseases, only specific disease conditions. All disease at some point, period, or other in its course is more or less a reparative process, not necessarily accompanied with suffering. An effort of nature to remedy a process of poisoning or of decay, which has taken place weeks, months, sometimes years beforehand unnoticed that was i'm pretty sure that's a, either a nurse or a a midwife florence nightingale yeah florence nightingale yeah in other words there's two factors everything that's wrong with you is because you're decaying or poisoned or both or i would say delusional but that's kind of like poisoning and then every symptom so-called disease is your body's attempt to repair it. And the biggest psyop of all in health is the doctor's medical profession has convinced us that these collection of reparative processes are actually diseases. So you get a splinter in your finger, you don't take it out, you get pus, they say you have an infection. No, you don't. You have a body's attempt to get the splinter out. You breathe in crap in your lungs, you know, because they spray it in the air and you smoke and don't breathe right, et cetera. And then you cough it out. And you go to the doctor and he says you have bronchitis. No, you don't. You have get crap out of my lungs process. 
It's not very complicated, <laughs> but it seems to be too complicated for most modern people in medicine. A thing that, re relating back to what I said earlier about holistic, alternative leaning people, is that when, when they come across someone like you or I who are saying that, yeah, of course, allopathic medicine is messed up, but also the overwhelming majority of things that you've learned are completely wrong as well. It's almost like they take us to be arrogant, like we know better. But the reality is what we're doing is pointing to the various people and institutions who are claiming to know absent of any evidence of their alleged knowing and saying, you don't know shit. And from there it's explore, explore for yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that's the, that's the most frustrating thing is that we're not, you and I aren't claiming with certainty to know anything. We're just pointing to all the things that people are claiming to know and saying they don't actually know what the hell they're talking about. But I think, what a lot of them have been disproven. Yeah, a lot. I mean, thoroughly disproven. I mean, you look thoroughly. at something. Yeah, thoroughly. I mean, you look at something like the. I don't. It's not germ theory. The germ hypothesis. Not even a hypothesis because it's a. It's a completely failed hypothesis at this point. It's been disproven thoroughly. But the point is that whole paradigm has been thoroughly disproven. But I think that the issue is. I don't know what it is about you, me, Kelly, Andy. Eileen, a bunch of our friends, where we think it's exciting to sit in the uncertainty, sit in the I don't know shit. So yeah. let's go explore. But it's like the overwhelming majority of the world, even the alternative approaches to health can't do that. Have you thought about why that is? Uh, Kelly's good at it. <laughs> at thinking about why that is. Um, I think it it's basically they're traumatized. Mm -hmm. And so when you get traumatized, you start worrying that you're not good enough. And if you don't know, it, it, you, you learned a lot of doctors. I mean, you know, I mean, I went to medical school, right? So I, I was with doctors and they're a particular, it's of course you can't generalize really, but they're yeah. a particularly immature sort of group. And they have gotten along by being smart, typically. I mean, some are good athletes and some are good dancers and all that stuff. But their main attribute is they knew stuff. That's how that's how I got along. That's how most of us got along. And if somebody comes along and says, you know, you don't really know what you're talking about. That's a big threat. Right. And, and you're a PhD in virology and it, your whole ethos and life and identity is about knowing science. And you come out and then you, you believe in bacteria causing disease. And some schmo comes up and says, oh, can you show me a study where they took only bacteria and sprayed it on people or drank people drank it and they got sick? And you think to yourself something like, uh-oh. Like, I got caught. I, I'm in trouble here because I know that sort of makes sense. Like <laughs> that seems to be, and and I hope somebody did that at some point like Coke or Pasteur or Semmelweis or, or then they'll say things like, well, how do you explain that, that when Semmelweis got people to wash their hands, they stopped getting, you know, childbirth fever. And then you say, are you saying that the only thing in a person's hand who just did an autopsy and mucking around in formaldehyde and the dead person stuff is a bacteria? Is that what you're saying? Like, that's how you prove it? 
Oh, well, then, and so now you got caught again. At that point comes anger, right? Yep. Well, what right do you have? What do you mean, what right? I'm just asking you a question. <laughs> like, like, I just wonder, like, is that true that the only thing in dead person's goop is bacteria? I mean, and at that point, you have to the exit stage left because your whole identity is being threatened. Mm. That's how you got ahead in the world. And somebody's coming along and saying, now, why didn't we have that? I mean, we do to a certain extent, but, and there may be some area in us that we protect like that too. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I think for myself, it was having a father who was clueless. Mm. And that taught me that you can't believe the people who are supposedly in authority. And that was a gift because, you know, like if I had, if he was, you know, not like that, I, I might have believed people. And I right. didn't because I learned that really early that you don't believe these people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know. I mean, that's an interesting question, but. Yeah. Yeah. So th the other one that I hear coming from a lot of the alternative health freedom crowd is, well, it's the best fit model we have. And until you can explain why it is two or more people get sick in the same space with similar symptoms, we're just going to go with the the germ model, let's say within the context. I know we touched on DNA, RNA, all the stuff, but let's say within the context of the germ paradigm, why is that logically fallacious? It's a scientifically illiterate statement. The claim is that there is, in this case, maybe a virus, if you're talking about chickenpox, that is being passed from one person to another. Or even that there's something in the, there's three, there's three stages of that claim. One is that the entire person makes somebody sick. Then there's a part of the person, like with viruses, it was so-called filterable agent, or you take some chicken pox and you've spilt goop and you filter it and the third is the actual virus so you say okay show me a study you know that shows that if you put uh 10 people who have chicken pox with 10 people who don't or whatever illness you want and and you do everything controlled so you control the environment the house the fear the food everything else that animals or people get sick then i'll believe it because I have about 30 studies or more that say it doesn't work like that. Show me one that does. Well, <clears throat> yeah, that's so, yeah, it's because it's you only believe studies. That's what, and this is the one that I hear people say too. Well, yeah, maybe there isn't a scientific study to demonstrate this, but we know this. This is well established in the real world. Right. That's what I've I seen it. Yeah, right? I've seen it happen. Uh, right. So, in other words, so then you get to the principle. The principle is if two or more people or animals get sick, same time, same place, same symptoms, that means they passed it from one to the other. Is that right? Yes. That's what they so say. you put 100 rats in the basement, somebody puts rat poison, next day 10 rats all bleed to death, they must have passed one thing to another. Is that right? No, that was rat poison. Right. But you just said that if they have the same symptoms, same time, same place. Well, how about scurvy, right? Sailors die. Berry, berry. They said for hundreds of years... That children die in the families one after another. So don't you think we should do a study and see if it really works like that? I'm happy to believe it. Mm. Just show me that they did it. They, you know, isolated the variable, right? And showed it independent and dependent variable and did it properly and did controls. And then I'll believe it. What's your problem? I mean, that's how we're supposed to learn things. No. We're, we don't learn it like that. We make shit up. 
Well, if you look at all these, if you look at all these studies attempting to demonstrate that disease is spread via the fluids of a sick person, of which uh, my good friend Jacob Diaz just made a post the other day where he has now over a hundred of these studies, over a hundred of them attempting and failing to demonstrate that disease is spread via the fluids of a sick person. When you look at these, almost all of them already have the presupposition that disease is spread via the fluids of a sick person. So when they fail to demonstrate it, they, they have some sort of escape route that they use. They have another way to reify it. Another, some of them talk about, well, maybe some of these people already had uh, antibodies. Yeah. Immunity, et cetera, et cetera. But without, ever going back to question the initial presupposition that disease is spread via the fluids. That's we're back to the unicorn. Exactly. There's exploding unicorns. You say, well, I looked and I don't see any. So how do you explain that? (laughs) It's obvious they're invisible. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. And, and right. And so there, in in science and and actually logic and reason thinking you can't have a unfalsifiable hypothesis otherwise it's a belief now mm-hmm. i don't have any problem with saying i believe that people spread illness i know it's not true but i believe it anyways <laughs> so that's fine right <laughs> and in matter of fact the thing that's likely to happen to you is you'll be around somebody who's sick and you'll get sick. Right. And so you've actually uh, made that, uh, that belief system become true. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. The, the interesting thing, and this has to do with how to do medicine. It's, I see over and over again, people who get sick all the time who really get that it, that's not how it works. And they don't stop getting sick uh, because, well, I don't know why, but I know that there was this saying, you know, the word becomes flesh, right? Okay. So somehow, if you think of the word as electromagnetism, right, it's vibration, uh, it somehow becomes real and how we go through our life. You know, especially when you consider that the model of the nuclear atom, you know, that thing is disproven. Right. I mean, even Schrodinger said, yeah, you know, if you look at an atom, you never see an electron. We made that up. Mm -hmm. That's why they say they have things like the uncertainty principle, which is you can't see the speed and the location of an object like an electron. But I have I know cops who say they can say the speed and and location of of a car, right? They have a gun, you know, and they go, <laughs> "We saw right. you going sixty miles an hour in a thirty right over there." Right. They can do it easily, mm-hmm. uh, but somehow when it gets really small, that's when the the absurd thing comes in. No, it doesn't work like that. Mm. Do you think it's futile trying to? figure out how things work on a microscopic level. I mean, I look at all the scientific fields that claim to study things on that level, molecular biologists, microbiologists, et cetera. Do you, do you think it's futile? Is it, is it, is it zooming too far in because you're failing to, you know, see the forest for the trees, so to speak? Yes. Water is not made of H2O. Water is made of water. And so just thinking I'm going to dissect water into its components is already an unwarranted assumption. Mm. And the, the, the old, old biology, which was accurate, they never did anything like that. Mm. They, they studied the effect of electromagnetism which is real, on living systems, and particularly the water part. And that's it. You don't need to get any more reductionist than that, because anything more reductionist than that introduces errors into the system. 
you right. You, it's also and, not and, looking at it in the right context at that point. Yes. If you're going to study living things, study living things as they live in their real natural environment and see what influences them. And you can do things like see what is emitted from them, like the biofield, like the sound or the light, you know, because that's that's interesting and you can right. learn from that. But that's not microscopic. No. And as that's not to say you... te technology is not useful, because in that context, you yeah. could use technology to look at something in its natural state. Yes. Yeah. And understand that just like, you know, Dolph is doing, you take a, a seed that's been improperly grown and it doesn't emit a wide spectrum of light or it, or, and the intensity is low. Mm -hmm. And so that is a low vitality seed and you didn't do anything to it. You just got a seed from a GMO seed catalog versus, you know, a healthy seed has a, a wider spectrum and more intense light. And then you could do experiments if you feed rabbits, you know, lettuce from this seed versus that one, which ones are better? Although that's mean to the rabbits who get the bad seeds. Right. So I wouldn't do that. I would just see if you feed the rabbits healthy lettuce from the good seeds, how do they do? Mm -hmm. Turns out they do fine and make a lot more rabbits. Right. And then you're good. And you might say, well, what if I, you know, put a biogeometry thing there or put it through a vortex or put it, you know, and you change the variable? What if I chant it in the greenhouse? How does that affect it? Oh, it's like much taste. Music. Yeah, it tastes better, you know feels better everything smells better that's called ac ac active actual science right if you're enjoying this episode please consider sharing it with at least one friend or family member who you think could benefit from hearing it you help us grow and reach more people by sharing it with those around you also be sure to head to the show notes to check out our membership offerings membership marketplace and more we all know that big ag is poisoning our food supply and big pharma's so-called medicine is straight up poison. What most people aren't aware of though is that most supplements are also filled with artificial sweeteners, dyes, GMOs, glyphosate, and a host of other toxic ingredients, even many of the more natural supplements. My good buddy James Benefico dedicated his life to crafting the world's cleanest, most nutritious organic supplements after a pre-workout energy drink caused heart palpitations so severe that he almost landed up in the ER. Organic Muscle was born, revolutionizing sports nutrition by using exclusively non-GMO ingredients from USDA organic farms. Since then, tens of thousands of people, including myself, have leveled up their fitness and their health with Organic Muscle's award-winning natural pre-workout. There's no jitters, no heart palpitations, no itchy skin, just nourishing organic food and herb-based ingredients for clean, sustained energy, strength, endurance, and recovery. Numerous studies have shown that Tonka Ali is the most effective herb in the world for naturally boosting testosterone levels. And we know that testosterone levels are depleting all over the world because of what's put in the food supply, what we're exposed to, Organic Muscle has the world's first fully organic Tonka Ali supplement. I only support and promote things that I actually use and I can say I legitimately use Organic Muscle products. Use code FORWARD15 at checkout for 15% off at organicmuscle.com. Right, and this is, the, this is the big one for me that so many people fail to grasp is that the scientific method is all about observing a natural phenomenon. The moment that you take something out of its natural context or try to zoom in on that level that we're referring to, it's no longer scientific because yeah. it has to be an observed natural phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get people who say, well, <clears throat> I take turmeric because of its effect on the nerf two pathways. <laughs> right. 
I mean, it's not it, it's not about whether turmeric is good for you or not. A lot of people have ate turmeric, they put it in ghee, and they did really well. But when you start talking about NERF2 pathways, years you got a lot of assumptions there, including that those chemicals exist and act the way they you think they do in your in your chemical reaction inside the rabbit or inside you. Mm. And that, as far as I can see, has never been proven. So I don't have I don't go by any of those kind of studies anymore. All right. They're meaningless. Whereas there's so much information from hearing people's story and in working with these known principles, electromagnetism and thought and 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 waves interacting with with water subst to create substance in all different kinds of ways which has been manipulated by chinese medicine they use different energy you know patterns in herbs and in needles and ayurvedic gets you to puke up stuff that you don't like it, it doesn't belong in your body just like florence nightingale or you could get them to enemas and coffee and stuff and sweat lodges you know people have been doing this for you know, because you got stuff in you that doesn't belong. In you. It's right. like, uh, and that's new. That's the new biology clinic. Well, that's, that's what, what I was going to ask. That was going to be my next question. What is the the proposed new biology? I know you just gave a, a a brief explanation, but could you give a little more detail on what the new biology is? Yeah, it's just it's trying to answer the question: What is actually real? And what's real is we're basically made of organized water that has is and the information to tell the water what to make how to make you is in the field mm -hmm. you know and there's some very interesting ways of proving that you can use this study i was uh watching which i wouldn't do because it's mean but they take these planaria flatworms and they cut their head off and then they they expose it to different frequencies and that causes them to either grow no heads or two heads or one head and that change is stable over generations mm -hmm. and the way i describe this it's like uh if you say okay here's this pile of bricks and and wood and two by fours and nails and stuff and look through this to find these pieces of material to find out the blueprint for the house. It's not there. You can dissect it to an a imaginary atom and you'll never find the blueprint is in the mind of the architect. Mm -hmm. And the blueprint for us is in, you know, the field around us, all biological living systems in it course interacts with with our material which is even question what do, what do we mean by that to create you and then if there's a flaw in that system you get sick and then your body tries to correct it and so what we're doing is it just like florence nightingale said it's boils down to you're decaying because you're starving or you don't have enough love or you think stupid things or or you're poisoned because instead of the sun, you're sucking on EMFs all the time and and you don't connect with the earth and you don't have loved ones and you're angry and et cetera. And you're eating glyphosate and you name it. So you're poisoned or you're taking injections. You know, there's lots of creative ways of poisoning. And that interferes with that flow. And then you're sick and then your body tries to repair it. And we're just asking the question, how do you help people in a real medical model, right? Because the, the other model is all based on disproven theories. Right. right. They treat you for a virus because your immune system is haywire. Like they don't even, there's no immune system. I mean, they just made that up to... Mm -hmm. to to explain why 10 people exposed to the same person who's sick, they'd all get all get sick because it's your immune system. 
It's the unicorns are invisible. I don't know why you don't see that. Explains everything. That's what we're doing. That's what you're doing. I love it. And it's it's you know it's challenging because a lot of times you don't know what to do, but you can always go back to those principles. What's the story? What's the field you are exposed to? You know, what are you putting into your body? How do you live? Hmm. How big That's, is the emotional? spiritual mental component to health i mean it's it's as huge as it can be mm. i here's an at, at the very at the very least stupid thoughts and stupid belief systems lead you down the wrong path but i'd yeah. say aside from that yeah delusions and then you end up um doing end up stupid becoming a things. medical doctor or you become a yeah. <laughs> right but I mean, here's an example. You know, I had a uh, anthroposophical doctor guy I knew who spent his life working in, in an AIDS clinic. You know, giving people HIV drugs because he believed in mm -hmm. viruses. And and then COVID came. He believed in viruses. Got four COVID shots. Fourth one, next day, dead in his bed. So he said, "What killed him?" So some people would say the COVID shot. He had like myocarditis or something. But what really killed him is believing in viruses because he wouldn't have done any of that. And here's another interesting story that uh, 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 there's this sort of flip side of this, but why belief and how you think is so important. This, this was like 30 years ago. I was playing golf with these two guys uh, who were best friends for years. Right. One guy was this sort of Joe normal real estate guy, happy, friendly, upbeat, everything. The other guy was mostly normal. He was a therapist. And we knew each other because our children were in the Walder school. So the, the normal, happy, friendly real estate guy, his wife, uh, because of her connections with the Walder school, decides to leave him because she was getting into spiritual pursuits and ended up running off and going off with this guy who wore yoga pants, you know. Uh, and this was devastating for him. Devastating. So I remember the time we were playing and he's all angry and throwing his clubs and sullen, with totally unlike him. And around the 16th hole, he's, he's, he looks at us and says, you know, I'm going to really go out and find out who I am, what I'm made of and what, you know, what makes me tick. Just, I have to really go inward and go deep. And his friend who knew him for years looks at him and says, Stu, don't bother. You don't want to know. And it was so interesting that that changed everything. And the guy immediately said, yeah, you're right. It's not me. <laughs> and and he forgot about it. And then he found this woman who was the love of his life, and he was happy from then on. Not wow. you know. And so even it's it's you know, it's not just what you believe, it's who you are. Like that was not who he was. Mm -hmm. So when you find out who you are and follow your path. And it's not somebody else's path. That story really taught me a lot. Because mm -hmm. if you go to somebody and say, no, you have to think this way, or you have to believe this way, that may not be them. Right. Right. And that that will he it would he would have been miserable mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to, you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, there's other Vipassana retreat. He would have been <laughs> <laughs> right now. The other person, they, they have to figure out, you know, what, anything they can about who, who am I, et cetera. Right. And that's what makes it fun is to be in that, you know, exploration, you know, who am I and what am I doing here? And how does that relate to my health, mm -hmm. my life? It's about me. 
It's not anybody else's fault. It's about you. Well, this is why when people say everyone must do X, Y, and Z for their emotional health yeah, or anything, literally anything, I, I just don't buy it because it's yeah. going to be unique to the individual. Absolutely. Right. And even, even my question, there was, there was a, a flaw in the way that I asked it, but it was, it was intentional. You know, I asked because I wanted to hear what you had to say, but emotional health it, again, that's going to be unique to the individual. For some people, it's going to be barely anything related to emotions for their right. lack of health or where for other people, it's almost entirely emotional. Right. Yeah. That's that's my problem with, say, German New Medicine is whenever it gets formulaic that everybody with bladder problems, it's because their territory is invaded. Mm. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen sometimes, but the way we're looking at it in our in our clinic and the way that I've come is because there are no diseases, right? It's everybody has their own story of what happened to them. And the components are what's happening in the field, which is the light and the sound and the earth and the feelings and the emotions and the thoughts. Those are like the palette. Mm-hmm. Now you don't know which one of that which one of those colors is being played in this situation. And then there's the physical stuff of the way you eat and the water and and you know the stuff you take into your body and you don't know which ones of those are impacting this situation. That's the palate. And so you what's what was so interesting to me in working at doing this is you know, having stole this technique from Carl Rogers about how to ask people questions, it turns out they knew what happened to them. That was what was so interesting. They know that, you know, yeah, it was this flu shot that got me, or yeah, it was I, you know, this, or it was, they know, but you have to uh, question them in the right way and then tell their story back to them. Mm. And then they, it's amazing what happens. They, people start laughing or crying when you hit the right spot. And then they always say, I knew that was the case. Right. And then you work on it. So that is that what you've trained your practitioners to do with potential clients? Yeah, I don't like the word train, but that's what we talk about. And we go through cases like, you know, that one of my favorite ones, a guy came in and he's sort of paralyzed. You know, he's walking with crutches. And so it's always the same. What happened? Well, I was fine until I was 12. And then you make him prove that he was fine until 12. Mm-hmm. Like, what were you doing? I was captain of the soccer team. I worked my dad's machine shop. I did everything, ate everything. I was happy, you know active, vigorous guy, right? So he proved it to you. Then what happened? Got a flu shot. Then what happened? Week later, I was paralyzed. They said I had post-viral Guillain-Barre syndrome. I went to six neurologists. They all told me I had Guillain-Barre from having a viral infection. And I've been working on it for 10 years and I'm still paralyzed. Not as bad, but so that's the story. So I tell it back. You know, so you were fine. You were captain of soccer, et cetera. Then you got a flu shot. Then you were paralyzed. Then he looks at me. He says, you think it was the flu shot? And I didn't say anything. I just told him what he told me. So I whip out the package insert because I happen to have it and said, one of the side effects of the flu shot is Guillain-Barre syndrome. And he says, I knew it was that damn shot. <laughs> and now he's then it's very interesting he says i i knew it was i knew they were lying to me and then he says very interesting do you know how to help people get over the repercussions of the flu shot it's a great question right that's what i would ask because if if i said no if i were him i'd go to somebody else Mm -hmm. so that's our job as prac, you know, that's what we're trying to do is to now the next person, it may be 
I, my joints hurt. What happened? I decided to only eat raw vegan stuff for 10 years. Next thing you know, my joints hurt. And so then you go on from there. So our job is to hear the story, tell it back. The person that will light up, it's obvious when you've hit the real story. And then you have to have a repertoire. Mm. It's a flu shot. You do this. If it's that you ate only vegan, raw vegan stuff for 10 years, then you do this. You eat Weston Price or whatever. And if it's that you, you know, were abused by your mother or some something like that, then you have to do this. Or you work with that. So that's what we're tr we're doing the same thing. I did the same thing with every everybody your who came reflection. In. Your reflection. Yeah. Yeah. And then th that was the question that I wanted to ask too, is that with, with the understanding that doctors aren't the ones doing the healing, I don't even like calling people healers, but for lack of a better term, when, yeah. you, when you go to someone that's a practitioner healer, they're not doing anything to heal you. Right. They're, they're really, if they're good, if they're worth their salt, they'll just reflect back to you what you need to do for yourself. Yeah. I'm going to go figure out how to get over a flu shot poison. And then the only difference is I happen to have seen a hundred people with flu shot poisoning, whereas he hasn't seen anybody or he doesn't know right. anybody. Right. And so I can be a resource and say, yeah, if you do this, if you take silica in this way, it'll help get rid of the aluminum. For instance, that might be the, and you could try that and and let me know what happens. Thanks very much. I'll give it a try. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, or uh, every time I pee, it hurts. And so, you know, so the, the, the made up theory, theoretical approach to medicine is you have a bacterial infection. This way is, so something is happening to decay your urinary tissue some poison or something it's 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 electrically degraded and decaying so the bacteria come and eat it so i've seen this a hundred times you give people a little bit of chlorine dioxide which helps donate a sort of charge and the tissues can can uh stop decaying then the bacteria go away and then you can think about you know what led this to get into this situation now they may not have known that, and so that gives them a hand, so to speak. Right. With, and with I don't them, see anything wrong with giving people a little bit of help along the way. No, of course not. I mean, of course we'd want to give them help, and I think, yeah, you know, especially if you're someone who is a helper that understands the true nature of health and disease, and you can point to all the things that the traditional and alternative approaches say are the causes and say, no, 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 that's not it. We're yeah. going to, we're going to do this from a completely different way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at what happened in your life that led up to this, hmm. that, you know, I, cause I didn't tell anybody anything. I just reflected. I mean, sometimes I embellished it a little bit like you, you know, so you were fine and then you got a flu shot. Is that right? Yeah. And then you got sick. Yeah, I never thought of that. I mean, <laughs> so they just haven't heard it in that way. But I didn't, you know, that's what he said. I would imagine that's one of your more simple examples. Do you find that when it comes to, let's say, the emotional, mental implications or or causes, rather, that it gets a little bit more tricky? And have you developed a way to approach that with the new new biology clinic yeah that's a interesting because here's another story which i think is what you mean uh, and i saw you know i i did this literally you know well not every day because then work every day but three days a week for 15 20 years once i got the hang of it every single person so i would i would sometimes get this so hi and and but I never knew anything about the person when they came in. I they had one sentence to write. I didn't want to hear what anybody thought of them. No lab tests, nothing. So what's hi? What's up? I have fibromyalgia. 
So how do you feel? People with fibromyalgia, they have pain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I've had it for six years. So how does your foot feel? How does your leg feel? People with fibromyalgia, their leg really hurts. It just hurts all the time. Uh, when you have fibromyalgia, your leg is really painful. I remember the first time I heard that, I thought, I don't have fibromyalgia. Like, why did you say my leg hurts? It doesn't even hurt at all. Uh, so then I would say, so when you wake up in the morning, how do you, you know, how do you feel? Yeah, people with fibromyalgia, they it gets worse in the morning. I thought you knew about fibromyalgia. You said you were good at helping people treat certain thing, you know, diseases like fibromyalgia. Yeah, but I'm just wondering. So when you wake up in the morning, you know, how do you feel? Yeah, people with fibromyalgia, you should know this. Their foot really hurts, you know, and 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 every part of my body, it hurts 24 hours a day seven days a week. Now, at that point, I quote, know the diagnosis, which is this person, and I saw a lot of this, they cannot own their experience of life. Right. It just, they are fibromyalgia. Now, here's the interesting part. Why, how does somebody get like that? Now, there's, I'm sure, a lot of different possibilities, but the usual one is because one of the tenets of new biology medicine is that every symptom, every experience is the body's attempt to heal. Mm -hmm. So fibromyalgia is, an, is your body's trying to heal. So how is that possible? So then I thought, okay, at some point in this person's life, they they learned not to feel something was too painful somebody was abusing them beating them or their life situation was like literally every time and so they had a choice it's essentially one feel nothing two feel pain and they always this is an exaggeration but because I'm just going to say this, almost always exaggerated the symptoms. Mm -hmm. In other words, I have pain 24 hours a day. You mean even when you sleep? Well, no. So it's not 24 hours a day. So anyways, so they exaggerate the symptoms. To, to in The way I would see it is their body was choosing pain as opposed to nothing. Right. Because that's a better choice. Because at least now you can do something about it. And sometimes you could get people to see it, see that. And sometimes not. <clears throat> but the people who did see it like that, they would quickly get over the fibromyalgia. Because once you can feel all the different pains and emotions, right. happiness, sadness, pain, <clears throat> discomfort, etc. Then you don't need to be stuck in pain to get you to do something. Whereas if you can't feel anything, you you're better off in pain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the body's choice. And so to get somebody out of that is just to get them to feel help them feel and and to recreate in a sense what happened to them that they ended up making the choice to not feel not a conscious choice but their wisdom part of their body said we got to check out of here because this isn't good on that point i've thought about this quite a bit there's different schools of thought on whether you need to know the exact details of the exact thing related to the exact event that made you feel that um, have that initial, I guess you could say spark that led to this emotional cascade, right? Yeah. Of, of lack of feeling or of only feeling pain. But I've, I've come to the conclusion that it's not necessary to do that. It's, it's yeah. more just necessary to whatever was the cause to just feel emotions, just literally yeah. any of them, not even just that specific one, just, let allow your body to feel emotions as they arise. Just feel yeah. 
because sometimes sitting with that person and it's sort of a light goes on and they inevitably then one of two things happen. They either start crying or laughing. Mm. They burst out crying or they burst out laughing and that breaks the dam. Then they start feeling and then they start, oh, and I should change my diet a little and I should do this and start, you know, moving in a better way. And a whole lot of things happen because they did get stuck in a pattern, right? And so you might have to like do a biofield tuning or help them with breathing or get them moving again or stronger. Right. And, and, and in some cases, like some tr trauma approaches, it may be helpful to go revisit that event. Yeah, right. It may be helpful, but it's not requirement. It's, it's not, not required. required. Right. Right. All it is is I get it. Something happened. I don't even necessarily need to know. I just no, now want to choose a different way and I'm going to work with my self to, to, you know, and commit to feeling whatever I need to, whatever happens. Because mm. the feeling is, is just information. Right. It's not a disease. I mean, we made it into a disease, but it, it's just not. Right. So uh, other than practitioners in health consults as needed for those who become members of new biology clinic. What else are you guys working on? I know you guys have movement classes and, and live workshops and then a lot of a huge resource library. What else? Yeah. I mean, the model is people who just want a different way, which I say is not, you know, when you, again, when you go to a regular doctor or alternative doctor, you're being treated based on, disproven hypotheses right. you get it you snot in your nose it's because you got a virus and then you got an immune system we're going to stimulate your immune system that is a disproven hype we we just say yes yeah, your body's trying to get rid of stuff so let's work with your body and maybe breathe some turpentine to help you get rid of it right and so the first step is you see one of the you know people who are they're all trained as medical doctors we're not working as medical doctors who do this story based you know reparative approach and suggest things or things get brought up in you and then we have like so called enrichment services where okay now i want to learn i know i need to move better i need to and i i think you're going to join us and teach people qigong uh, qigong. qigong yeah yeah, I actually probably sign up myself. <laughs> you say, okay, I get that. I want to, I want to learn something different. That's or 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 how to tune my biofield and how to, you know, tap to release emotions, and you know, and we have a vet, and because people, oh, so animals are in the clinic too. Yeah, that's right. Hey, do yeah, animal we, do animals have to sign up as members? The yeah, other, they're, they're, I used to call them owners, but it's not owners. <laughs> they're, 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 because right. I could tell you, Pumpkin owns me a lot more than I own him. <laughs> but uh, although I pay the bills, but <laughs> got it, got it. We're working you really on really are Pumpkin Slave, aren't you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Forget the IRS, it's the Pumpkin. Yeah. So, yes. So that's the goal is, and, and, you know, they do, we do classes. So let's talk about food and let's talk about moving. Let's talk about the biofeel. Let's talk about how to release emotions, just things that, I mean, are part of, of life, you know, especially in a crazy ass world that we live in. Right. You know, so it's good to, you know, and, I mean, Qigong is per is perfectly moving energy, using your physical body to move energy, right? That's right. exactly the old, old biology. Right. Right. So it's, it it's basically people... getting back to all the all the approaches that had it right way back yeah. when. This is it's 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 almost like a misnomer because it is nothing new, just like you're saying. Right. It's the it's old, not... old biology. Right. But old so... old is a double negative, so it's new. Yeah. So how does that help people with arthritis? Because if you move better, your joints don't hurt so much. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you think the only thing people, if they're listening, they think, no, it can't be that simple. 
No, that's yeah. We spent right. trillions of dollars in studying <laughs> NERF2 pathways and mTOR enzymes and telomeres lengthening, you know, and it cannot be that I just have to eat right and move in the sun and 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 do some creative movements that work with the flows of my body and I'll be good. That can't <laughs> it can't be can't be like that, but it is. It is. Right. Right. Yeah. It's uh it's really refreshing though, because I mean, I I think back to this this course that I taught with Dr. Edith Ubuntu Chan um called Super Wellness. And that's all we focused on was all the simple things that human beings have been doing for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And the people who went through the course were like, wow, this changed my yeah. life. And it's like, oh my God, it really is that simple. It, yeah. It's so simple. Yeah. You move and you eat and you, and you don't hate on everybody, you know, right. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's like shocking to people. You mean that affects how I live? Of course it, you know, it's not, it's, it's debilitating. Mm -hmm. You have to have fun and be interested and be creative. And, and that's the story about, you don't always have to try to dissect yourself and see, you know, everything I'm made of. You can go out and play golf with your friends and have fun. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I don't really have anything else, Tom. This was right. this was simple and to the point. Um, man, I, I, uh, do not endorse a, a lot of, things especially not a lot of doctors and especially because like <laughs> no <laughs> kidding i mean shit it's so tough like it, it's hard for me to conduct and i i won't you know name names it's it's just hard for me to conduct a lot of the interviews i do on this podcast because it's it's not that again going back to oh i know better than these people know it's that yeah a lot of the people I know, okay, yeah, they have something interesting to share that I'm interviewing them about, but they don't get it in a lot of ways. And I know you and I have talked about this because that also applies to some of your guests, but if there's, if there's someone that I wholesale endorse because mainly because of the way that you think yeah. and, and, the, and your humility and willingness to say all that shit that I used to know, I don't know shit about. And in yeah. your willingness to continue doing that. Right. I mean, even, over the last couple of years, there's more things like DNA and RNA and all, and all this, all yeah. this stuff. Um, that's why I appreciate you and and can wholesale endorse the, the new biology clinic, because I know you're coming from a genuine approach of trying to figure out how all this stuff works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, to me, I guess it could, at the bottom line, it, I'm just interested and in, it's fun. Right. And and I, you know, I mean, it's serious business because, you know, people get sick and, but I, I don't know, seems like there's a better way to do it. And I'm, I'm thrilled that you're joining us. I, I, have, in some ways I've always wanted to learn a more movement like Qigong because it is exactly the same model, just moving energy. Yeah. That's what we're doing. And yeah, you'd be great. I think you'll have a lot of fun and we have some really fun staff meetings <laughs> like what is you know what do we make of this like right uh it's good well i love i love pat and i love asher so i'm i'm all about yeah. new biology clinic too so great yeah. well tom thank you so much for joining me and for those who are interested in new biology clinic please check the show notes all the information is there we're uh definitely partnering with them um for the way forward. One more quick question, Tom, if there are practitioners who are listening to this, who are interested in training in, let's say the new biology approach to health, is there any, yeah, we have a new on? biology curriculum, which is a, like a four month training thing where we have all these videos and books and group meetings and get people who are interested, particularly practitioners together to say what in the heck is going on. Incredible, awesome.
So many of us dream of buying some land, growing our own food, and becoming self-sufficient away from a society that's gone completely mad. What if it's easier than we think to make that dream a reality? Siblings Jamie and Shelby over at Living the Off-Grid Dream have cracked the code to getting land and living a life of freedom. They'll show you where to find land for $1 down, that's right, $1 down, with low monthly payments as well as how to structure your vision for a homestead, retreat center, regenerative farm, or community. It's one thing to have food, water, and land security, but it's an entirely different thing to have the financial security to buy the land and build it out in a way that aligns with your goals and aspirations. Their program teaches you how to make enough money on your land to cover all of your costs to make that happen. Plus, they've got you covered with pre-filled out plans to give you inspiration if you're not quite sure what your best move for your land is. And if you're a member of The Way Forward, you get a free one-on-one -on -one strategy call with Jamie and Shelby, as well as a free bonus gift. If you want to turn your homesteading, off-grid, or retreat center dreams into a reality, join Living the Off-Grid Dream by clicking the link in the show notes or heading to thewayforward.com forward slash off grid. In nearly all cases with modern health systems, you're waiting months for appointments only to spend a mere 10 minutes with a doctor who quickly hands out a generic diagnosis that is likely rooted in a total misunderstanding of health and causes. And then you're offered a one size fits all medication or invasive treatments with unpleasant side effects. If this sounds all too familiar, consider a different approach with the New Biology Clinic founded by Dr. Tom Cowan, a respected natural health doctor, author, and speaker. Dr. Cowan's holistic perspective on health and wellness and a deep understanding of the true nature of health and disease sets this clinic apart. With the New Biology Clinic, it's not about quick fixes and suppressing symptoms. The practitioners take time to understand your unique story recognizing that health is unique to the individual and that illnesses have a variety of causes physically and metaphysically. Members of the New Biology Clinic enjoy a flat monthly fee that includes a range of valuable services like health consults as needed, practitioner-led live streams on diverse health topics, access to a members-only resource library, and multiple live group sessions every month. These sessions cover fitness, breathing integration, biofield tuning, guided meditation, EFT tapping, and much more. Unlike traditional healthcare systems that thrive on frequent visits, prescriptions, treatments, and suppressing symptoms, the New Biology Clinic's motivation is to make you healthy and keep you that way. Visit newbiologyclinic.com to learn more and use code THEWAYFORWARD for $50 off your account activation. If you're a member of The Way Forward, email hello at thewayforward.com to receive $150 off your account activation. Your journey to genuine healing begins here.